What is up guys, Jeep and Bubba here with the Jeep and Bubba channel and today I'm doing a little bit of a review. We're at almost uh, 12,000 miles on the Jeep Cherokee KL. A lot of you guys have uh, liked the, um, the the road trip video, the review I did on that. I really appreciate it. There's been a lot of awesome comments. But uh, I was actually in the shop today. Let's see if I don't hit my head. Okay, so I was actually in the shop today to put a hitch on this, a trailer hitch on this. And no, I'm not going to put an install video on in here. There's actually a couple already on YouTube. And uh, I don't have a real great way to film it today and show you that. But I'll let you know how it goes. I bought the Mopar kit. So, uh, ooh, I feel a sneeze coming. <laughs> Those bright lights are getting me. Okay, here we go. I really just want to show you guys what it looks under, underneath here because I've never been underneath it. So a little, little rust and a little scratch from our Colorado trip, but kind of neat. Um, big beefy lower A-arm. I'm guessing if you had to lift this thing, you'd have to, to modify and get a longer A-arm and you probably have to swap this knuckle. And in the front, it doesn't look that hard to have to lift one of these. I, I don't have plans to do that, but if I did, it seems really hard in the rear. Um, nice shock. There's a sway bar connector right here. Uh, you can kind of see, it's really got an, a good looking frame. What I'm impressed with, there's skid plates on everything. So I guess they assumed some, uh, some rookie off-roaders like me would take it off-road. <laughs> um, so it's a, it's a, this is the V6 model. So underneath me here is the engine and the, um, uh, the trans, transaxle and uh, transfer case kind of all made it into one with CVs going out on each side. And then a mile long drive shaft, you can kind of see drive shaft here. It's about a mile long, but one, here, I'm turning you this way. One thing I thought was kind of neat, this thing is true dual coming out of the V6 and then womp 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 goes into a resonator. But another thing I thought was cool, on both sides, it's actually got steel going over the unibody on this and um, I'm pretty impressed. These sort of look like a slider from the outside. Pretty sure they would crush immediately. They don't look reinforced, but at least I know this is here, which is pretty nice. Um, there's also, I mean, just a ton of skids. I think it has more skids. I, I like Wranglers a lot, but I feel like they put a little bit more effort into this. Maybe that's the Fiat that everyone's afraid of that's in here, but uh, nice winching points. If you're doing it on a lift, they have them nice and obvious on these things. And uh, yeah, just big beefy skids. Um, the performance guy in me immediately sees this big, what I call a mouse trap because it just runs in here and then the mouse is just running around to uh to try to get out it's like that old game of uh i forget the mouse game trap or something like that but that's what it reminds me of i need to clean my clean my tips tips get a little dirty but um but this one i was talking about in the rear if i wanted to lift i need to change this arm probably and uh uh, I'd be concerned about there's just a lot of arms going onto this knuckle. There's a, an upper, two lowers, a sway bar link in the rear. Uh, but I'm impressed with the quality of the shock, I mean the spring, and the shock, um, I don't know if you can see it here. It's really long and droopy, and it's got a real beefy arm. Um, it almost looks like uh, something like from Terraflex, or maybe... Uh, it almost looks like Bilstein quality. Uh, don't make fun of me, guys, but it actually, I mean, that's what it looks like to me in the aftermarket world. This doesn't look like a factory shock. It really looks like a quality piece. And look, here's another trailing arm coming off of here. Uh, something else I'd like to show you. I hope you can see it. There is a electric box on the brakes in the back, and I'm wondering if that's part of the four-wheel drive system, if that, um, or if it's just part of the anti-lock brake system, but it has like a weird, it has a really, really weird um, hydraulic line coming off. So I know on uh, the Toyota Tacomas, part of their traction control things, they will lock different brakes to try to help get traction. But uh, I don't know if that's part of that or not. But it really is weird. And I would hate to know what happens if that fails, whatever this is or how much it costs to replace it. CVs are pretty beefy uh, as far as CVs go. Obviously you have... Uh, set of a differential uh, well I guess it's really your differential but um, instead of it just being like a pumpkin 
it's routing the power and you can see all kind of electronics on here um, this does have a locker front and rear of sorts and uh, throws that power left to right now if you're a Jeep guy or an off-road rock crawler guy all of this stuff is kind of a joke um, now these arms are pretty beefy and you can see in our Colorado trip we skidded them up but if you look at like this drive shaft here I mean you get something beefier on a, a 92 Cherokee and it's just so long but what I'm impressed with from the factory is how high they tucked it because that took some thought this exhaust will be the first thing that you hit underneath here and they've put heat shields on everything they've put these skid plates which again they're not super beefy or tough but if a guy wanted to buy one of these and had a, a family and all he wants to do is take camping or overlanding or fishing um it's got pretty decent size inside without being a full-size suv you know suburban or something like that i think it's neat i think it's kind of neat uh how well built it is under here it definitely doesn't look american built not talking bad about how things are american built but being under a bunch of cars this reminds me of a bmw um uh, maybe that's the the fiat like i said i don't know how much of a hand was in it i know they built a lot of these um in toledo but um or maybe it's all the only place they build it but i know they do build them in toledo uh, i'm sure it's not all american parts i don't know if anything is anymore probably uh the Tacoma might might be the most American vehicle. I, no, I mean, you guys are gonna fact check me on that, but uh, the Wrangler's probably pretty close. But uh, it's interesting now how much is made in America, but they consider it North America, um, you know, Mexico and Canada, which I got no problem with Canada, and really got no problem with Mexico, but I do like things being American made, obviously. I mean, uh, how cool is this old MJ here, this old Comanche, super awesome. And uh, it's about to get some JCR love. This is Daryl, the owner of, J one of the owners of JCR Off-Roads. Grandpa's vehicle and the JCR um, JL there, prototype rear Vanguard, oh, Vanguard bumper, yep. And uh, they're new, this is Sneak Peaks, brand new. Uh, tire carry delete got the uh, tag light in there got your backup camera in there and then that's gonna be a real beautiful bumper that should be released soon but yeah what I'm doing today is this one happened to not come with a hitch so I'm gonna be putting a hitch in here tow hitch I got a piece from Mopar I don't know how hard that's gonna be I'm really procrastinating and I'm making this video haven't seen you guys in a while and I thought hey I really would like to show them the underside of a Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, the KL. For you guys new to Jeeps, there's you know the JK, there's the new JL, there's the old MJ. You can Google what yours might be, you know, TJ's, YJ. They gave this designation a KL, a lot of people don't know that. Um, and they really haven't, I don't think, gained popularity in the off-road crowd yet, but I've enjoyed ours off-road. My good solid review is, if you wanna build a wheeler, uh, I'd almost buy a Renegade at this point if you didn't want to go, if you wanted, like, I want I wanted a Jeep. Let me clarify that. I want a Jeep, but I want it to be smaller than a Wrangler, more fuel efficient, and I don't care about rock crawling. I just want to overland. I, I think there's more out there for the Renegade currently than there is this Cherokee. I think the niche market the Cherokee fits is my family's. It's perfect. So, like, my... Wife drives it every day. I can fit me, our baby, our dog, and a weekend's worth of stuff in the back. And with the all trains and the lockers and four-wheel drive, I can pretty much go to any camp spot in the state of Michigan or in a lot of places in the United States where there's gravel road, dirt roads. You need a little bit more higher clearance. You can't just get back there in your Toyota Corolla or even your two-wheel drive pickup truck if, if it's muddy. This thing is gonna get back there with the lockers I showed you guys some of what we did in Colorado, but it amazed me how good the technology is in this thing. And again, I'm impressed with the fact that they thought to put skid plates just about everywhere and beef up the A-arms where they're going to get hit. And the exhaust is really well built, um, tucking that drive shaft up. I think they did a great job. I'm not just saying that because I bought one, because I didn't expect... Uh, I leased this thing thinking, I'll own it for a few years, and it's really going to be for my wife to drive 
you know. Um, and you can follow her on Instagram at hashtag CFJeeper. Um, but uh, it's really going to be for my wife to drive. And she has driven it, and she's really enjoyed it. And our baby girl, Abby, has enjoyed it. That's why you haven't seen me in a while, because I've been with Abby. But uh, I've really been impressed with it. Quality's great. Rides are great. Gas mileage is decent and definitely better than a Wrangler or a Cherokee like I'm driving currently, um, an XJ. And, uh, but that's kind of the underside review of it. That's my 12,000 mile review. I've really been happy with it. It's perfect for somebody that just wants to be a weekend camper, fishing. Um, I'm putting the hitch on it to tow. I have an off-road trailer. You've seen it. You may have seen it in some of the videos. If you haven't, check out our winter overland uh, video from two winters ago when I brought that thing out. And I just want to have it on here. So if we want to carry just a little bit more or possibly a rooftop tent, uh, attachment on it or I'm even thinking about putting uh, um, or purchasing one of these like teardrop trailers in the future not anytime soon but when my daughter gets a little bit older this thing can tow up to 2,000 pounds and I think what would be neat is just these things are like you know a thousand pounds or 1,500 pounds and then it's just really a place to sleep and store your gear uh, and keep them dry and then I always hammock camp as you guys have seen but I guess if the mosquitoes got bad, like they do in some places in Michigan, I could kind of maybe sneak in there for the night too. But uh, that's my review. I've rambled too much. Uh, please like and subscribe. And all the new people who are subscribing, uh, welcome to the channel. Thank you for subscribing. I don't normally do that much with Jeep Cherokee Kales, but every once in a while you'll see something coming out. Hey, there's one thing I'd like to tell you guys right at the end of this video. I appreciate you hanging in for it. I have some uh, announcements to make and they'll be coming out in just about a week. Uh, I don't know if a lot of you know because a lot of you are new subscribers. And again, I appreciate that. Please hit like. If you're not subscribing, please subscribe because it motivates me to keep doing what I'm doing. So um, I have an Instagram page, which is hashtag Jeep and Bubba. And then uh, there's a Jeep and Bubba page on Facebook. I will be announcing things on YouTube three, four days, maybe even a week in advance. Uh, before I'm going to put them on Facebook and Instagram so my loyal YouTube viewers get the first kind of big news. And I know you're saying, well, what do you, you know, like, did you get a, another, like, did you get a lift kit or, like, did you get a roof rack for this thing? Which I think a Gobi roof rack on this would be great. They make them. They're really expensive, and I can't afford one. So you can either send me one or have Gobi hook me up or whatever. Um, but no, I've got some new products I just recently purchased. Uh, I just purchased a new trailer, a, a car trailer. So I've got some new straps that I bought. No one gave them to me. And uh, I've, I've got two different varieties that I just bought and I want to review them. I've got some like new items like that I want to review. But even bigger than that, I've got some huge like, it's gonna be big. It's gonna be big for me and my family. And uh, I hope you stay tuned to see what's going on. Uh, I think, uh, a lot of you would be happy or don't even care, but uh, I'm going to have a lot more videos coming. Jeep Beach is coming up in Daytona in the next month. I'll be there, and I'm going to have all kind of coverage for you, just like I did at SEMA. But I'm going to try to make it. You know what? A SEMA video didn't get a ton of views, but some of you watched it. If you got some suggestions of more of what you want to see, like I think it would be cool for me if I was watching someone's event. I, I've been watching all these Moab videos this week. I am just jealous I want to be there. But the cool thing is, I know what sort of what to expect when I'm there. If someone shoots it in a realistic, like, like me to you right now, I'm telling you, um, this is what I'm doing on my Jeep. I'm procrastinating. This is what's going on in the shop, and I'm just there's no there's no editing to this. It's just me filming it on my phone. Um, so what I'm getting to is that you kind of know what to expect in reality when you go to these events. You may be saying, hey, I might want to go to Daytona to the Jeep Beach. Uh, is it worth my time? I think it's an awesome show if you know what you're getting into. If you're going to wheel, there's some wheeling off-site and there's an obstacle course, but if you're a guy that rock crawls all the time, like uh, out in California or like uh, uh, Wind Rock or Gulches or AAP, like that, it's nothing that's going to press you. But what I like, I like to hang out on the beach in Daytona, soak up the sun after a Michigan winter, have a cold beer with some friends, and uh, just hang out and hang out with my Jeep buddies that I haven't seen all winter and get excited, uh, see what new. It's kind of like the SEMA for Jeeps in the spring and, and uh, for the East Coast, and everyone's bringing out their new products and showing off what hey, this year it's going to be all JLs, I'm sure, and showing off what they got. I hope there's some vendors bringing out some stuff for the Cherokee because me and 
my wife decided to go long term with this thing. We've been so happy with it. Uh, so that's why I'm throwing the hitch on. Eventually, I'm gonna get a basket for the back. Been thinking about doing uh, some sort of bumper winch on the front. Uh, I'm gonna upgrade these fog lights here to some LEDs soon enough. These are already LEDs here. Those are your headlights, already LEDs. Uh, these are like driving lights. Have you seen the new face on the new this year's uh, 1819 Trailhawk? I think it looks great, but I haven't seen one in person yet. And then thinking roof rack, and uh, I don't know from there. But I'm gonna make it just more functional for our lifestyle. And that's what it's all about in overlanding and off-roading. Make your vehicle functional for you and make it look how you want it to look. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Do you, do your style. That's what I'm doing, that's what I do with these videos and I appreciate you guys watching. I try to reiterate that at the end of almost every video that I'm not trying to be anything other than what I am and I wanna show you guys what you may wanna see so that you can be you and uh, maybe you can relate. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.